You know, I've heard that plants grow better if you play music for them. And on that note, it's been a while since I last heard you play. Sorry, I've been a little busy these last couple days. Oh, the Dendro Archon. What a pleasant surprise. Hmm? Oh, welcome, great Dendro Archon. And your companions, too. Welcome. I'm Amira. I run the flower shop here. And this is my husband, Moses. Yes, how may we help you? You already know all about me. There's no need for all the pleasantries. Perhaps I should call you the dream's owner? <laughs> As expected of the Dendro Archon. I'm sorry, Amira. It seems my research has attracted the Dendro Archon's attention. Why don't you go back to the flower shop? I'll come help you a little later. Okay, of course, dear. I'll see you later. It appears that I was too naive to think I could deceive the Dendro Archon in person like this. To avoid looking like too much of a fool, allow me to ask the first question. How well would you say you understand this dream? This dream was built by the Akasha, and it has the power to create imaginary people who no longer exist in the real world. As for you, you found a unique way to become the owner of this dream, going so far as to have even given up the ability to wake up again. Given up? The ability to wake up? <laughs> Impressive! You truly are the embodiment of wisdom. Please, tell me how you were able to arrive at such a conclusion. In return, I'll answer the question you're most curious about. It's simple. Apart from you, this space only consists of real people who are dreaming and imaginary people who are created here. Although you are here and appear no different from the others, I can't sense your dream. How can I wake up a person who's already awake? Fascinating. Since you're the fully awake owner of this dream, it can never collapse from you waking up. Theoretically, this should also give you absolute control over this place. I have to admit, it really doesn't get much better than that. But even knowing all of that, one question remains. How did you do it? Isn't the answer right in front of you, great Dendro Archon? It's because I've dedicated my entire reality to this dream. I uploaded my entire consciousness into the Akasha when it was still running. Actually, this all started because of an accident. My original goal was not about the Akasha or a collective dream. No. You were motivated above all to create a hyper-realistic person. The desire to reconnect with a real loved one is the one shared sentiment between all our dreamers. That's right. However, human models are too complicated. Only the Akasha has a Nyana energy supply powerful enough for me to generate and sustain my models. The Akasha is truly magnificent. If I siphoned a minuscule amount of its energy, nobody would even notice. And even this minuscule amount of energy was already more than enough for my purposes. Even using just crude methods, I was still able to train a fairly realistic person. I named my first work Amira. We just saw? She and I entered the academia on the same day. Starting with admission procedures, we bumped into each other six times on just that first day. And because of that one day, we eventually went on to fall in love. We studied, conducted research, and made breakthroughs together. Our rhythm was always in step. I felt like we were two separate bodies that shared the same heart. However, Ella's later took her from me. Yes, 
I need more training samples to perfect Amira's personality. I found their details in the Akasha's database. Using the pretext of testing for mental health disorders, I implanted signaling devices in their bodies. This way I could connect them to a network, and Amira could feel their yearning. Little by little, they helped her to grow and develop a warm, human personality. To improve my efficiency and allow myself to focus on nothing but my research, I uploaded my consciousness as well, and became a part of the network. Hmm. So, technically speaking, it's not that you won't wake up, it's that you can't wake up. Yes, because the Akasha was suddenly turned off, I lost all of my Nyana energy. I became imprisoned in the very network I had constructed. At first, I panicked. But, after coming to grips with the situation, I realized that I could restart this world as long as I could find a replacement source of Nyana energy. That means everyone in the network is providing you with Nyana energy! That's all there really is to it. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. I'm just saving them as well as myself. I provide a beautiful dream, and in return, I harvest their Nyana energy as fuel for the dream. They can wake up any time they wish. People need to sleep anyway, so why not have some beautiful dreams while they rest? I agree. This is the home we spent a great deal of effort on to build for ourselves. Yeah, she's right. We're staying here of our own free will. I don't understand this at all, but... I just want to spend some more time with my family. I don't want them to be sad. Thank you, dear. Great Dendro Archon, I hope you can understand. You don't need to gather around here, it's all right. The Great Dendro Archon is nothing if not kind and considerate towards her people. She won't interfere with what we're doing here. Uh-oh, now he's playing dirty! It seems like I won't need you to answer my last question. You're willing to tell me all your secrets because you have nothing to fear. If you use real people as your weapon and turn them against their Archon, then there's nothing the Archon can do. They just want to be with the people they cherish. I don't think there's anything wrong with me providing them with that opportunity. They don't wish to eternally part with their spouses and friends. What's so wrong about that? If you understood humans a little better, or had also experienced firsthand the absolute devastation of loss, then perhaps you wouldn't be so cold towards us. If you had used your talents and determination for a just cause, you could have become a sage of the new generation. Unfortunately, you've committed one of the six cardinal sins of the Academia, by attempting the forbidden and fearing none. You equated people's feelings with cold Nyana energy and deprived them of the pain that they have to face. You lured them into these dreams and even now remain completely unaware of how evil all of this truly is. Pain? Luring? Those kinds of things haven't existed here from the moment this world was created. She's right here. This is Ilmon's child, Hydar. Huh? My daughter? What's wrong with her? This dream relies on a set network, which means that only those with devices planted in their bodies can enter this world. Carefully think back and retrace your steps. I... secretly went back to the mountainside with Hydar. Minar was already there waiting for me, and Hydar was able to see her mother. Ah. Uh, you mean. she isn't actually the real Hydar? No, because unlike you, she can't enter this dream. The moment you came into this dream, it created a Hydar to realize your wish of reuniting with your family. So. Tell me, where's the real Hydar? 
She's still out there on the mountainside. That's right. And she must have been terrified to see her father not in his right mind. Not to mention the monsters in that area. The situation is very dangerous. If Hydar's still out there, then... What are you talking about, Dad? I don't understand. I must wake up right now. I can't leave her there alone. Oh. <sighs> It seems the others have also remembered something. People try to avoid pain and stay in their perceived bubbles of safety out of an instinct to protect themselves. This is human nature, but it is also one of their weaknesses. However, why are there still so many people striving to move forward even when they know the path ahead is dangerous and painful? It's because people don't only live for themselves. They have families, loved ones, friends, and communities. They have dreams that they are still trying to achieve. But in this dream, you showed them only the most comfortable and soothing things. This entire world has been built on the foundation of buried and unseen pain. It's all just a well-devised scam. It seems like I've stayed in the dream for too long. I still have so many things I haven't done. <laughs> I thought gods didn't understand humans. That would have explained why they created such a flawed world where countless tragedies took place. I didn't expect you to arrive at the answer through sheer power of observation. But unfortunately, it means nothing now. If you wanted to spend a little time in the waking world, go right ahead. In any case, I wanted to spend some time alone with Amira. As long as this dream continues to exist, you'll come back. Humans aren't as strong as you think, and even if you're a god, they won't always listen to you. It's time to purge all the extraneous data and noise. and find somewhere safe. I am the master of this dream. I can create endless waves of monsters with the snap of a finger. Don't worry. They'll wake up before they get hurt. Mira doesn't like to see others in pain. If you know what's good for you, leave now! Scatter! I'm the frying pan! Wings of darkness! Come, sever night from death! Steady as stone! <laughs> you haven't won just yet. This dream is mine! If I go into hiding here, not even an Archon can ever find me. And as long as people yearn for happiness, they will return here and rebuild this paradise! <sighs> Uh, what is it? The stream is spiraling out of control and is collapsing now. Oh no. Amira. Amira. Amira! Amira, are you all right? I don't feel well. <laughs> no, no, no. Please, no. From there. Don't ruin my flowers. What should I do? Where did it go? He left because he doesn't want you anymore. <gasps> Who am I? I'm not a mirror.
He's not very proficient in using the Akasha's technology, and he spent a lot of Nyana energy creating monsters. Now the system is out of control. All the people he created also turned into monsters, including Amira. It's terrible, even for a dream. Even Paimon's freaked out. <sighs> Paimon can't imagine what they're going through. The good news is that the chaos seems to have subsided. Now we only need to wake up the people here and let them return to their real lives. Amira. My dear Amira. They're all gone. It was just a big dream after all. I couldn't change my fate. And my knowledge turned out to be useless. What a cruel world. Do you still think this is our fault? I don't care about that anymore. The Nyana energy used to sustain this dream has all been transformed into monsters. This dream will soon collapse in my consciousness along with it. Let me disappear with Amira. I'd rather turn into dust than to ever wake up again. It seems that everything that's happened is too much for him. He's lost all hope. I think seeing Amira turn into a monster was punishment enough for him. After comprehending the hollowness of the unreal, it's time to revisit the meaning of existence. Existence? <laughs> I'm different from the others. I've long given up everything outside of my consciousness. Using my knowledge of the Akasha, I have a way to extract your consciousness from here and put it inside a knowledge capsule. The Academia has probably kept your body, so you should be able to wake up soon. No need. Just let me disappear. Reality means nothing to me now. This isn't compassion. I won't let you escape your punishment by simply disappearing. As for your life after that, it will be up to you how you want to exist. Alright, Traveler and Paimon, we should go back. We can finally wrap up this whole thing. Nothing. Uh, let's tell the people here to gather at a moment of dreams after they wake up.